Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. We're back again today with another episode of WTP on Tour, and this one is gonna be an absolute cracker. When I came up with the idea of filming this type of series for the channel, this golf course was number one on my list to film because it's so local to me, but it's got so much amazing history, and I've deliberately not come and played it until this moment because I wanted you guys to see my reaction first time. So we're back at Bramshaw Golf Club, this time we're playing the Forest Course. Now this golf course dates back to 1865, meaning it's nearly 160 years old and it is one of the oldest golf courses in England. I think only Royal North Devon, which was opened a year before this golf course, is still in existence today in terms of age. So this is a proper history of golf in England right here. Now the thing that makes this golf course so unique is not much has changed about it in the last 160 years. Apart from a few changes to the routing, the holes and the design are all the same and we've got one really unique feature. Because it's on common land in the New Forest, the animals have the right to roam. So they are the unique greenkeeping team of this course. They're the ones munching away on the grass and keeping it nice and short for us. So if you're expecting fairways and greens that look like Augusta National, this certainly isn't the video for you. But if you wanna see a throwback to golf of how it was played 100 plus years ago and see all the wildlife along the way, I'm hoping we're gonna be able to show you that today. This golf course is only 5,757 yards and a par 69 off of the back tees. So it isn't the longest golf course in the world, but please don't let that fool you. There are a couple of really long par fours here and a couple of really long par threes as well. So I definitely think it's gonna be a challenge along the way. There's also one other unique feature about this place. There's only one hole with bunkers on, the rest of it, no bunkers whatsoever, just a couple of natural streams that meander through the golf course to act as the hazards, as well as the natural tree line of the new forest. Right, let's get back up to the first tee. Let's warm up and let's start hitting some shots. Right, first hole, 410 yard par four. This is already gonna be a cracker. I can see some, what looks like horses right in the distance a few holes down. I can hear some horses neighing as well in the distance over there. First hole then, it looks like the flag is just down and to the right hand side. Quite a tough start actually, 400 yard plus par four. The only negative to today is the practice facilities are at the other golf course, so I haven't had a swing just yet to see what comes out of the bag first up. Oh, big block down the left. I think we're gonna be okay. It looks wide open enough. I think we're gonna be okay. So we're absolutely okay. We're down the left-hand side. We had about another five or six yards before we got into any real trouble. But I think what you're gonna see right here is everything that you're gonna see about this golf course today. We've got some animal feces there. We've got some big horse hoof prints there on the ground. The other thing about this golf course is because of the fact that you've got the animals roaming, it is preferred lies everywhere on the golf course. So just do bear that in mind that I will be picking, cleaning and placing today. We've got 213 to the flag. The wind is blowing hard. I think down and mainly off the left hand side. I also think there's a ditch just in front of the green, but again, this is YouTube. We're gonna try and go for it. I've got a five wood in my hands. I'm gonna see if I can start it left of the pin and hopefully that wind will bring it back. Second shot of the day, let's see what happens. Oh, that's a really good hit. If it gets over, it's gonna be good. Oh, I saw it bounce. I don't know if it's got over the ditch and just short of the green, but we'll have a little look when we get up there. So I did manage to get it over the ditch. It's actually a dry ditch today, so not too much of a problem. We've got a little chip and run. We've probably got about 10 yards to the green. We've then got to get it over that little false front and up there. I'm gonna hit a little eight iron bump and run to see if we can chase it up that slope. Get up there, get up there, get up there. Release a little bit. So it's probably closer to about 15 foot left apart. The wind, as you can probably see from that flag in here, is really, really strong today. Really gonna play a factor as we work our way around here because although there's some trees, there's lots of this golf course that looks like it's exposed. One thing I would say is this first green is a lot better than I was expecting it to be because I was expecting there to be more marks of the wildlife being on here. But let's see what happens. Right, I think this is gonna be just a fraction off the left, mainly because of the wind. All about pace, first part of the day. Wow, that is rapid. Didn't move at all. I can't believe how quick that green was. Absolutely rapid. Let's not be silly here, Luke, and then start with a double bogey with a three putt. Oh, I have, I pulled it. Oh my God. Nearly missed that one, just tapping her in. So second hole, it doesn't get any easier. We've got 193 yard par three, playing 186 today because of the pin position. 
directly back into the wind that was coming on that first hole sort of round the corner for us on the second shot. I've got a five wood which even with this wind I think it's going to take all of it to maybe even get the front edge. I think driver's too much but I think in this wind five wood if we hit it well it's got a chance. Oh I've leaked that massively left as well. What a poor start that's so far left. So I've actually come into these trees and unfortunately got a kick backwards which is a disaster. I don't think this is part of the golf course you're supposed to see. I'm on a terrible bit of land here. Looks like it's just like a boggy patch that's soon going to be very very boggy. I have no idea how to play this shot other than try and get the toe down and try and get a little chippy one with a 9 iron and just see what we can do. So whilst I'm a little bit embarrassed that I'm in that position in the first place, I'm really pleased with how I played that shot to get it back to here. We're pin high, 10 yards to go, a couple of yards of fringe and then maybe sort of seven feet of green. I've got a little pitching wedge. I'm just going to try and putt it to get it through this fringe, a little back foot putt just to try and get it through. Go, 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 go. Honestly guys, we're in the middle of October in the UK, so properly in the autumn. I can't believe how pure these greens are. They're unbelievable considering they're open to the wildlife. I can see a horse hoof print right there, so the horses have certainly walked across here, but they are playing really, really quick. Like I didn't hit that chip well enough, and I'm surprised it's got this far. Right, little four and a half footer to save bogey, to avoid a horrible double, double start. Really pleased with that. So quick again, didn't hit that very hard at all, but nice to make a bogey. So the third hole is a 335 yard par four. We've got the cricket club on the left hand side, which dates back to the 1880s and cricket is still played there. And then what we've got is the green is actually behind a fence. And that's one of the other features of this golf course is that around a couple of the greens, they've put some fences just to keep the wildlife off. The really cool part about this next stretch of holes is you've heard of Amen Corner at Augusta, Three, four and five on the forest course are called cow's corner and that's because it's the part of the golf course where you're most likely to encounter the new forest cows. Can't see any out on the golf course myself today but if we spot one I'll make sure I get a close up for you and see if we can show you it. Oh I've just caught the edge of those trees. Look at that. New forest ponies on the cricket pitch, one this side of the fence. Beautiful. So I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up because the green's right up there in the shadows. We've got a raised green behind that fence, pin at the front. It looks really, really narrow and it's, I've still got 148 yards because of how poor that tee shot was. So I've got a six iron, which I think into the wind today is going to be the minimum requirement of what I need. But I think if we even get it into, inside the fence and give ourselves a chip and a putt, I'll take it. The problem is I don't want to hit a hybrid in case it's monster long or goes too far left and right and we lose it. Oh, it's a good shot, it's just high. It probably would have just caught the upslope to the green but we're just a little bit left so hopefully a chip and a putt. We've got to start making some pars, so let's try and play for the up and down. So the second's done okay for me, it might have just crept onto the front edge if we were in line. We've now got to play over the fence. There is a little local rule that if you hit the fence with your shot, you do get to replay it. So just bear that in mind. We're on an upslope, so I'm going to kind of, the ball's going to want to turn that way. It's also going to want to de-loft as a result, but I've got a 60. I'm going to try and aim it to the left. Jeez, look at that go. Oh, God, I wish I could start this round again. It's been a terrible start. I'm not swinging it great. My short game has been atrocious. And we're racking up shots. I only get 11, I think, shots around here and we're six over par through three. Like. What a disaster. The main tee box in this hole is having some renovation work done at the moment, so it's all fenced off. We've got a temporary tee down here, so it's making what is 
nearly a 200 yard par three play at 167 from this tee box. The wind for the first time is helping a little bit, but it's massively howling sort of from sort of seven, eight o'clock. So it's kind of going across me massively, which with this flag out there on the left-hand side of the green behind that fence means that it's probably gonna be tough to get close to it unless you hit a cut shot, which I don't want to deliberately try. I've got a seven, it's 167. I think down the wind, it's gonna go a little bit further. If we can just get it on the green, I'd love to just make a pass, steady the ship and, and try and reset a little bit. I'm gonna go just out the pin and hopefully the wind will move it just a little bit. Oh God, I started that a little bit right and the wind's really caught it. So definitely the right club, the seven there. We are inside the fence, we are pin high, we are just a little bit right. I started it right and then the wind's moved it. Got a long, hopefully quite easy bump and run to execute here. There's a long way to go, but it's not a difficult shot. It's okay, I've just started that a little bit right. Honestly, I don't think I've played greens this quick in a few weeks in the UK which is absolutely crazy for me. I'm really struggling to tap things. I'm probably overcompensated on that bump and run there. Even that, look at it go. Jesus, I absolutely tapped that. I've missed it. Oh my God. I did tell you guys that this series would be about the good, the bad and the ugly. Today we've got the good in terms of the golf course and my golf has just been bad and ugly. What a horrible start. We've got a 287 yard par four. I can see the flag down in the distance but it's quite a blind tee shot. It seems to go over kind of a little bit of a hill so I can't see what's down there. My watch suggests there might be a dip. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna hit a little seven wood and hopefully play short of it and then we'll see where we go from there. Hey, I finally hit a golf shot. Dead smack down the middle, just on the pin, bouncing nicely. Hopefully gonna give us a wedge in. Let's hope that's the turning point and the start of good things to come. I need it. So I finally hit a good golf shot. I'm hoping that is the turning point. Just to give you an idea of how strong that wind is, this hole was 287 off the tee. I've got 67 yards in, so we've hit it about 220. That's a club that normally goes about 185 to 190 for me. And it isn't rolling out too much at this time of year, albeit this is quite a dry part of the course. So I definitely think the wind has probably added 20 yards plus to that tee shot. So when we play into it, that does give you a bit of perspective. 67 yards in, there is a little ditch down there. I don't know if it's dry or wet. I've not gone and taken a look, but we do need to fly this most of the way to the hole. I've got a 60 degree wedge. I'm gonna just try and smooth one down there and hopefully let it ride the wind. Go. Oh, just not hard enough. A little bit too smooth. We have got onto the front edge though. Let's try and see if we can hold a putt or at least roll something up close and make that par that we probably don't deserve yet, but let's hope that'll be a turning point. First part of this putt looks like it's up the slope. I think it's gonna turn a little bit to the left as it goes. It's also down the wind, which with these greens and how quick they are, might impact it a little bit. Stop, stop, stop! Oh my God. I promise you guys, I'm not normally this bad at putting. I just can't get a feel for these at the moment. I've just turned the camera around for you guys. Hopefully over there, you can see the herd of the cows. There's loads of, I think it's horses over there in the distance as well. Absolute phenomenal. Really, really phenomenal. I'm making putting look difficult on these greens at the moment. They're just so pure and I just can't get a feel for them. Finally. God, it felt like I even just tapped that. We've made a par. Yes. Right, come on. Sixth hole is a really short par five, only 457 yards and it is down the wind, at least for the tee shot. I can't see the green, but based on the course map, I think it's just a slight dog leg around the corner. But I'm really hoping you guys can see there's just a herd of wild animals there. My biggest fear now as an animal lover is that I don't pull this one 
right at them. I think they are short enough that my drive should carry down the wind, but I am hoping to go a little bit left of them as well. But yeah, that's just absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really enjoying the setting of this golf course and just how at one I feel with nature. Again, I might not be playing my best golf, but really that isn't bothering me. I'd love to play some good golf for you on film, but this is all about showcasing to you one of the oldest golf courses in England and just how golf used to be played. And I'm, I'm loving it. Right, got a good vibe off the tee shot on the last hole. I think that's really good, just cutting round. There's one animal just down there on the left hand side. I can't work out under the tree if it's a cow or a horse, but it's just going towards that. Now, if the hole does what I think it does, which is dog leg slightly to the left, we could be in A1 position. Have you ever seen a golf course like this? It's amazing, amazing. So I normally film with the camera behind me, but I just wanted you to see me play a shot with this behind me because it's just beautiful. The tee shot of it's great. Looking at where the 150 stake is, I think actually this is a perfect line. We've come around the corner. It's probably about another 10, 15 yards to where you would consider to be off of whatever is the fairway. The hole's down there, but it did say in the course guide, it's blind until you get to the green. It definitely is that. I can't see the flag. It does look like it goes over a brow and we have got about 225 still to go. So knowing that, and knowing I've not played here before, I'm not gonna take the five wood and try and get it all the way there because I don't wanna risk trouble in case it does narrow up. So I'm just gonna hit a seven wood. Oh, wind, leave that, leave that, leave that. The one thing I would say, guys, is look, I'm not playing my best, but I just can't get over this. This is just paradise for me. Yes, it's not a pure manicured golf course, but you don't always want that. At times you want an experience, and this really is an experience. I could just play this golf course all the time and just enjoy being at nature. It's just brilliant. Interestingly, I've got lucky and done well. I thought the green was over there, sort of between the two tree lines. It's actually really close to what was the right-hand tree that I pulled it towards, and uh, therefore I've actually hit it dead on the line of the pin. There is a ditch though running through, which you can hopefully see, and actually therefore I have got a little bit lucky that I haven't run out, but probably lucky therefore that I did take that seven wood, anything more, and we might be in a little bit of trouble right now. Just got to hit something over the ditch, Again, wind behind, onto the green, hopefully it'll feed up, not get too cute. Something past the pin here is absolutely not a problem. Bite. Oh, probably just a little bit too aggressive. Didn't want to bring the ditch into play. Looks like we've got a downhill putt on what are fast greens. Birdie putt, downhill. I said these greens were quick. Trying to put my ball down to get it to stop. It didn't want to stop, so it is on a bit of a slope. I also can't read it. And there is a big couple of hoof marks on my line. So I'm not sure what it's gonna do to the ball, but I guess it's all about just pace. Keep going, keep going. Oh, we'll take... Finally hit one with good pace. Okay, it's not a birdie, but a little tap in for par. Back-to-back -back pars, we've steadied the ship. Right, seventh tee, we've steadied the ship ever so slightly with a couple of pars there. we are now just got a slightly elevated tee playing over the ditch that we just pitched over on six. The hole's quite straight away. It looks like it's narrower down there. I think from my watch, we've got another ditch near the green to play over. It's into the wind, so we're just gonna try and hit driver and just get ourselves down there. Oh, I've leaked that again really badly. Oh, got 141 yards to the pin. From what I can see, there is a ditch down there. Short of it, and it is a strong wind, but the pin looks like it's middle to back. So I'm gonna try and hit a seven iron, see if we can muscle it there. We might get a bit of a flyer lie out this wispier grass, and hopefully just get it over onto the short stuff. Oh, tugged it down the right. Be enough. 
that could be in trouble. We might be in the ditch there. Don't know how far it is to carry. I am in the ditch, but luckily, well, it's not very good there, but where I am is still playable. So I am gonna try and play it. One thing I really hope the camera's picking up is you can see some horse hooth prints out on the greens. It obviously means that as much as they are absolutely brilliant greens, there are probably gonna be a few imperfections there along the way. And you've just got to accept that focus on pace and if it goes in great this would be some kind of lucky lucky par save oh i've not got it there we'll take a five it's it's deserved after what i did with the tee shot and the luck i got on the second anything more would have felt like we really snuck a couple out of the golf course there that we didn't deserve Right, the eighth is a par three. The tee is forward today, so we're playing closer to where the red tees would be, which are about 166 on the card. It's actually 173 to what I think is the pin that I'm picking up on the left-hand side. There's a marker post just in the distance, like a little triangular one, which I'm hoping you guys can see, but the hole's blind. Like I just can't see the green. There's like a little ridge that it goes over. So not having been here before, the wind's definitely coming across and down sort of again from sort of seven, eight o'clock. It's really gonna to wanna to move that ball right. So I really feel like I've gotta be aggressive and go at the pin and hopefully it'll land on the marker post. I've got a seven. It probably is a six in terms of distance if I knew where I was going, but I just would rather be short than try and pump a seven, a six down there, be long and find out there's a load of trouble. Struck it well, a bit down the right, the wind's moving it as well. Disappeared over the brow. So I've just come up a little bit right. The front of the green, I would have been on it if I was straight enough, but definitely the right play to take a seven. There's a ditch running right behind the green with everything sloping towards it as well. I think if I'd taken a six and caught it, there is a chance that I might have ended up close to that ditch, which would have been a disaster. So always the case on a blind hole that you've never played before, just be a little bit safer. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Hit that leaf. It's okay. Oh, stop, stop. It's still going. It's okay. It really did go away from me. It isn't a slight uphill putt now, but this green, as it sort of the chip rolled past, it just kept going. I still don't feel like I can be aggressive with this up the hill, though, because they're so quick. Oh, I've not hit it. So scared after what's happened on all the other holes. Oh, ninth hole, last hole of the front nine, 335 yard par four. Now I just bumped into a couple of members who were teeing off on 10 as I was putting out on six. And they told me that the late great Peter Allis ranked this hole as one of his favorite 18 holes of all time. Right, I see one tall tree in the distance. I think that's where I'm gonna go with a seven wood and hopefully leave ourselves like 140 in. Oh, that needs to sit on that line. Needs to sit on that line. So unfortunately, I was in that bush just over there, which I've just shown you the zoomed in shot. So I've had to take an unplayable. What we've got now is 129 yards. The pin, I don't know if you guys are gonna see it. It's just over this tree. It definitely is that one. So I've got to hit this just over to the left edge of that tree. It looks narrow over there and my watch is telling me there is a ditch. So it just requires a good golf shot. And I've not hit many of them today. Lots of negative self-talk here at the moment, but let's see what comes out. Oh, I've hit a good golf shot. It's all over the flag. Please be the number. Oh, I've hit a good golf shot. Yes, that's like one every four and a half holes so far today. This is why Peter Alice loved this hole. Look at that for a setting, wow. So I've hit a really good nine iron here, probably the shot of the day so far from 130 to six feet, just pitched a couple of feet back there. You are gonna see my backside more than you're gonna see my face on this shot, but I just wanted you to see that framing of that stream. I just hear a lovely stream trickling there in the distance. There's no one around for miles. This is just golfing paradise and I do get why Peter loved this hole. Oh, it's just turned on me. Oh. Didn't probably deserve the par after taking the drop. Okay, so starting the back nine with another par five. 
elevated T box and then it becomes blind as well. I can't see where we're going, but I know we're going back into the open area where all the cows were that we were on on the last par five. And I think it just moves a little bit to the left. So this could suit me with the wind coming off the right and my shot shape of the day as well. So hopefully we just get it out there, it'll ride the wind and give us a chance to get close to the green too. Maybe start the back nine with a five. In terms of score, not very well. I've used up all of my shots, 11 over par. So it's gonna take something special on the back nine to make this card respectable. Oh, wind, leave that alone a little bit. That's me and wind. Oh, it's bounced, it took a funny kick there. So the tee shot's absolutely fine. We're just down the left-hand side of this big open expanse that's kind of the sixth and 10th, I guess, fairways combined. The issue I've got at the moment is the herd of cows here. There's currently three or four cows walking across the middle of probably where I'm going to land it, including a baby cow. And there's a load of New Forest ponies up around the green, which I'm really excited to get to. But I just don't want to hit this shot until those cows get a little bit closer and out of range. So I'm going to turn the camera off, we'll wait a second, and then we'll play in a sec. A few moments later. Okay, Mr. Cow, I'll try and hit this and get out of your ways. Sorry. What a golf shot that is. Beautiful, dead on the pin. Probably about, probably gone nowhere because of the wind, but it's left us with a, what looks like a good approach shot in. It was a good one, weren't it, mate? I thought that as well. Don't shake your head like that. So there might not be any bunkers on all this golf course apart from the one on the 12th that we'll come to in a minute. But one hazard as a golfer, you have got to avoid the cow pats. I've got 132 yards into the green. There's wildlife all around it. Please don't hit any of it, Luke. I've got an eight iron because of the wind into it. Just doesn't feel like anything I've hit on this hole has gone very far. I'm going to go at the pin and hopefully the wind will just move it into the middle of the green. Oh, please avoid the horse. Please avoid the horse. We've avoided the horse. Hopefully we're not stuck behind that bush. Just walking up to the green here and just trying to take a wide berth around the cattle and the ponies that are up here. Oh, he's having a little look around. You all right there, buddy? Right, right, 11th hole, par four, 425 yards, stroke index one. We're going back the opposite way now. So the wind is gonna be helping my cut shape. Just about to step into the shot and we've got a little guy walking across. Come on fella, off you go. There's another one behind, just walking past the green that's behind me, making a little bit of noise as well. Honestly, like, I haven't got my best golf today, far from it, and I really wish I could mix this golf course with my best golf, but I just don't think I've enjoyed myself or been this happy on a golf course for a long, long time. This is just so, so cool. Oh, there's another fella coming now. Let's try and hit this one before he comes. Drive of the day. Wind's just holding it up lovely. What we needed on a long par four. Go on mate, you go first. You stay in there? Drive of the day talk about getting a crappy lie. Right, so it might be drive of the day, but it still is, I think about 220 to the front of the green. Again, it's downhill, it's blind. I can't see the flag in the distance. I've got no idea where it is. There is like a little something on a tree in the distance. I don't know if that's a marker post telling you where to go, which is towards more left than I probably think. So I'm gonna do that and hope that the wind, if it moves it and it is right, it's there. Taking a drop still means that my stance is in a bit of a cow pat. Caught that a little bit heavy. I'm worried because there's a ditch down there that I needed to carry. Hopefully it's heavy enough that it's short enough. So the good news is we are well over the ditch. It's a big drop off and actually the ditch is about 20, 30 yards behind me. So it's a lot further away from the green than it has been on the other holes. But because of the fact I didn't catch it clean, we are still a little bit of a way from the pin. Got a little pitching wedge in my hand. Gonna just try and throw it up there 
and hopefully just whack it into the bank and let it run up. Sit. Definitely not the best camera angle to show you me putting from, again, because you're going to see the back of me, but I really want just to get that sloping just to the side, even if you could just see it for a little bit, just to see truly how steep it is as it drops over towards that ditch that we played over. God, I really did just trickle that and I was aiming it probably up there really and it still just turned, but look, it's a bogey, but it's a bogey that I would have taken on this tee on this hole, stroke index one, especially now that I've played it. The 12th hole, this is a stunning little par three. It's called Bunkers because it's the only hole on the course that's got bunkers. And I'm told from the course guide that this is a favorite spot for the New Forest pigs to go and have a little scratch and a roll around in the bunkers. None here today, sadly. It'd be great to see some somewhere on the golf course. They've got a lot of different tee boxes for this hole. There's actually three different tee boxes. We're on the far left one. The wind is off the right, the pin's front left. So I'm hoping we can just aim at the middle of the green and let the wind move it back. It's only 120 yards to that front pin, but I don't think short's good. So I'm gonna take a nine iron. I've got good vibes from the one we hit as our approach into the ninth. Oh, the wind's really moving that. Stop, bite. Stop, oh. Not good. I've pulled it, that's so bad. Ah, oh, story of my day that, isn't it? Just not getting anything going, just keeping the bogey train, all stations to 18. Right, 13th hole, 335 yards. I think I just can see a flag fluttering in the distance round to the left. We are hopefully down the wind and slightly off the right. So that's gonna help. So I think the play here is to aim at the trees on the right hand side and hope that the wind again just takes it downwind and moves it ever so slightly. If it's a good line, it's an absolutely awesome drive. Oh, don't kick that way in the wind. Wind just wants to move it a little bit more to the left than I hope, but I think we're okay. Pin looks like it's tucked back right. That looks like it's a dry ditch in the front of the green, a feature of this golf course. Wind is definitely howling kind of from four or five o'clock behind me. So although I've only got, I've got 120 with that back pin, I'm just gonna take a gap wedge. Come on wind, hit it, hit it. Not enough, but we're on the green. So we've hit the green. I think if I'd hit a pitching wedge, which is probably the club, if the pin was not at the back, we would have got really, really close, but I just wouldn't have wanted to risk bringing long into play. We've got what I think is an uphill, slightly off the right birdie putt here. It's a long way away. Given how I've putted today, two putts from here would be phenomenal. Oh, nearly one, nearly one. Bit pacey. Middle of the cup, nice par, needed. Hole 14, 380 yards right back into the wind again which is not welcome and it's stroking x3 so it's a tough hole without that wind i think i can see a 150 stake up the hill which feels like it's really close but it's obviously miles away so anything just at that i think and let the wind do its thing So this hole is an absolute brute into this wind. I don't know if this is the general prevailing wind on this golf course, but it's only 385, but we're already uphill 20 yards from the tee behind us. It feels like it's another 10 yards up to the green, which is just the flag is tucked round to the corner. Actually, you do need to be further right on this hole than I am. I thought I was down the middle, but I am blocked out a little bit. I don't think I can get there even with a five wood. So I'm going to aim kind of 30 yards right of the flag and just try and get as close as we can up there with the five wood. Oh, I've pulled that massively right. So crazy enough, even into that wind, it was such a big pull that I have actually got it pin high, but it's 65 yards right of the flag. I was never going at the flag because of the tree, but it's another 30 yards right of where I was aiming. So we've got ourselves 67 yards to what looks like an upside down saucepan of a green here. 
go, go hard, go hard, go hard. Oh, it's just hit the slope and kicked right. I feel like you've got a few options here. You could try and run it up there. Or you could take a bit of loft and play over it. I'm going to try and play a bit of loft and take it, get over it. There's no scorecard left today, so we might as well try and f a few fun things. Let's see what I can do. Release. Played that one really, really nicely. Hopefully we can make the bogey. Good five after a poor second shot. Okay, so the 15th is a short par four. I think the green is just over there on the left-hand side. So it's up through a ditch, which is about 190, I think, away. And then it almost turns quite sharply to the left. I think the big hitters could definitely take on the bushes and try and get it really, really close. It is definitely coming off the wind that way. So hopefully going to help me with that little cut shape that I've got at the moment by holding it up straight. I'm going to have a go at hitting driver as close as I can over the ditch and hoping that we can leave ourselves a short shot in, try and make another par. Oh, that's just honking. There's some like gorsy bushes over there on the right hand side. I think I might be close to or in them. So we're absolutely fine. The tee's over there. The gorse bushes are just to the left hand side, the first set. We must have got through them or bounced around them. They're a good 10 yards that way. The second set of them are another 10, 15 yards that way. So we're absolutely fine. We've got 109 to the flag. The wind is coming right across here. So into off the left here. So I think the play here is to try and miss the pin on the left hand side and see what happens. Got a pitching wedge, would be a 115 club normally, hoping that today it's the right club for this yardage into the wind down the hill. Come on, just come onto it nicely. Oh, it's just short, but it's all over the pin. Probably one of my best strikes of the day with that wedge there. This green, I just looked at it, it feels like it's really up and down, a bit like a fun fair ride. So not sure exactly how hard to hit this one. All I know is don't smash it through it. Right, at 25 feet for birdie. Finally, I've hit one with good pace. It feels like we've actually hit a regulation par. Happy days. It's a 16th hole, another shortish par four at 323. But we are again, I think this is going to be the case all the way in. We are into the wind, this time into a cross off of the right, which is probably not a wind that helps me given what I've been doing today. I feel like I need to hit driver just to get it a chance to get up there and give myself something short in. Pin looks like it's at the back. It looks like there's an oak tree on the right hand side that could block you out. So we'll maybe go at that and hope that the wind moves it off of it. That is a horrible healy necky drive but it's out there and it's probably stayed under the wind as a result. Right, the good news is that little squirter of a drive, careful now, has meant that we have got quite far up the hole considering the wind and the quality of strike. We've only got 123 into the pin, but that wind is strong. So I'm gonna try and just sort of hit a eight iron in there and see what we can do. A little chippy one. Oh, wind, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Maybe just caught on the front edge. Repair your pitch marks, fix your divot, people. Even on a place like this, have a bit of respect, fill them up. So that sort of punchy eight iron did a lot better for me than I thought. The green's quite long and we're a good sort of halfway between the pin and the front of the green. And where you are on the camera, where you're placed is literally the back edge. So it's quite close, this pin to the back edge and a long, Actually one of the biggest greens on the golf course, if I'm honest with you, long and fairly wide. We've got about 35 feet here for birdie. Again, just given how I found these greens today, would bite your arm off for a two putt right now. I feel like it's a little bit uphill just by the flags. I'm hoping that might help me with pace. Gotta go. Ooh. Four and a half feet still on it, so probably just not good enough that first putt. I'm seeing this left edge. Hopefully I am right. Oh, 
Oh my God. It's a great putt, it's just turned on me at the end. That's a silly three putt. Really silly three putt. That's a shame. 17, stunning little par three to finish. Everything about this golf course is stunning. Really interesting thing I just wanna say is, I've bumped into about five members while I've been on the round, just where the holes cross over and they see me with the camera and things. Every single one of them has said they prefer this course to the other one because you're just at one with nature. It feels like it's golf as it really should be and I absolutely concur with them. Right, wind is howling into off the left. I think that oak tree, which is like behind the middle of the green is a really good line. It's 149 to a back right pin. I've got a six iron because I really do want to try and get it there. As you've seen from my putting so far today, it's not been that great. So I don't want to leave this one miles short. Come on wind, hit it, move it right, move it right. I've actually got it pin high. We are just dead pin high to the left. Actually, when I came out from behind the tee box and looked at the flags, it is more that the wind was more straight into than I realized. I thought it was into off the left. I think this green's gonna slope from the left all the way sort of back to front. So as I'm looking at left to right, we've got this little bit of a mound to go over. I've got a nine iron, just gonna sit up Try and hit a little putt with it. Get it onto the green, just let it release down there. Come on, keep going, keep going. I've read it beautifully, but I've just not got it there. After what these greens have done to me all day, I'm getting scared of them. I read it beautifully, just didn't hit it hard enough. And I've left myself a really tricky putt that's gonna be downhill off the left-hand side. Oh, it's such a stunning par three that I would love to hold this. Love to hold this. But at the same time, I don't want to rattle it miles past. And it's not turned and I've rattled it miles past. Right, we're on the 18th tee. Just before I tee off, I just want to say thank you once again to Molly, the general manager at Bramshaw, for giving me the chance to come and film. Also to the green keepers here, as well as that unique team of green keepers that we've seen along the way that have made this so magical. Also a special shout out to the members that I bumped into on my way around. They were all really, really lovely and said lots of nice things about this golf course. Really, really nice to meet all of you. The 18th hole that we've got looks like it's a slight dog leg around the right. I can't see the pin, but there's a little copse of trees on the right hand side at about 180 and the trees in the distance are about 220, but we are up the hill about 10 yards as well to get there. And again, that wind is kind of howling off the right hand side. So I do think we want to hit driver and just try and go anywhere to the left. It looks wide open to the left. This might help me with my shape and also the wind and just try and get it in play. Hit a drive. It's taken me 18 holes, but I've finally shown you guys what I can do. Played what I thought was the perfect drive, but actually you need to be further right and probably hitting less club up here. I have been thinking about hitting over it. I just don't think that's the play, particularly as there's a road behind and the way my game's been today, I'll probably thin it into it. So I'm gonna just try and hit a chippy seven iron down there, hopefully under the tree, chase it up as far as we can. or I'm gonna hit a shank. What a disaster. Sums up my day. Please laugh at that, everyone. I've hit a shank. Right, come on, third one into this hole. Let's try and not do the same again. Come on, sit, 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 sit. Oh, it's just rolled through the back. Guys, if you like the video, please do like, even if you're just liking it for how wonderful this golf course is. If you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. As I play more of these rounds, I will get more confident on camera. I'll get used to the routine of having to set up the shot and get into it, which really is different to your normal routine. And I will get better along the way. So please do give me a chance. What a golf course, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've loved it. They always say a bad day on the golf course is better than a good day anywhere else. Hopefully I've proved that with this place today. Absolutely loved it. Thank you so much, Bramshaw. Check them out.